shot. Oh, it almost went in. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Big finish. Dreams to come true. On the road to the Final Four, we join you today from Rupp Arena in Lexington. This has been a hot ticket, and why not? The number one team in the country, a 19-game winning streak. Kentucky matched up with SEC rival Vanderbilt. And welcome to Courtside, everybody. I and Eagle along with Jim Spinarkle. Two weeks ago, these two teams played. Vanderbilt gave Kentucky a major test, but the Wildcats pulled away in the final four minutes. Impact freshman. Mm -hmm. It's been synonymous with John Calipari coach teams, and he's got one this season that very well could win player of the year. And at 6'11", Anthony Davis has the most impact of any player in the NCAA when it comes to the defensive end of the floor. He's blocking nearly five shots a game. The ones he doesn't block, he alters and gets you thinking about it. But where he's really improved is at the offensive end of the floor. He gets three offensive rebounds a game and puts it back. When you look at Vanderbilt on the other side, though, the pressure's on Festus Azili. He's got to play with poise in the post, be very, very patient, make good decisions, and not turn the basketball over. All right, Jimmy, right now let's take a look at the AT&T Fast Analysis. Well, when you look at Vanderbilt, they're led by their th big three and their experienced players. They have not won yet at Rupp Arena, so it'll be interesting to see how they play. But they need to shoot the basketball well and be poised. They can't let Kentucky go up and down the floor on them and turn the ball over. Kentucky, on the other hand, when everyone gets involved with this team, they are just very difficult to beat. They have the poise. They can shoot the basketball. They have all the tools. So John Calipari is headed in the right direction. A 50-game home winning streak is on the line for Kentucky. We'll have starting lineups. Opening tip when we come back on CBS. CBS Sports NCAA basketball coverage is sponsored by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. And by Craftsman. Trust in your hands. SEC battle here in Lexington, Kentucky, 13-0 in the conference, trying to become the first team since the Wildcats did it back in 2002-2003 to go undefeated in the SEC. Kevin Stallings in his 13th year as the head coach of the Commodores. Let's take a look at his starting five, including that big three that you talked about, Jimmy. Brad Tinsley is a senior. Jenkins part of the big three, the leading scorer in the SEC, along with Jeffrey Taylor, Festus Azili, and Lance Goldburn, the senior from Brooklyn, New York. Kentucky, Deron Lamb, Marcus Teague, the guards up front, Kid Gilchrist, Davis, and Terrence Jones. John Calipari now in his 20th year as a head coach in Division I, third year at Kentucky, has never lost a home game as the head man of the Wildcats. Our officiating crew, Anthony Jordan, Jamie Lucky, and Lee Cassell. Davis and Azili will jump it up. We're underway. Vanderbilt controls the tip. A couple of keys you're looking for early here, Jimmy. I'm looking at the pace in terms of what Vandy's going to try to do. I think you should have some butterflies and try to attack down deep good work early on to set the stage going towards the basket iron. But I think, you know, it's, it's natural to have butterflies. You're playing the number one team in the country. So see if they can play with poise. And I think we've touched, the, we've touched on it, and Kentucky has done it all year long. How poised can they be? Can they distribute the basketball and get everybody involved at the offensive end of the floor? Foul called against Terrence Jones, and Lance Goldburn is going to the free throw line. Vanderbilt is 1-5 against ranked teams this season. The lone victory coming against Marquette. 74 to 57. Goldburn, the senior, averaging just under nine points per game. Excellent rebounder. Seven boards per game. One out of two. Offensive rebound. Azili as Tinsley is able to save out near the midcourt line. So Vanderbilt with a one nothing lead. Half court set here for the Commodores. Taylor swings it for Tinsley. 30 seconds gone by in this first half. Tinsley, high low action. Azili, the back end. Davis denied by the freshman. Taylor lines it up. 
knocks it down a triple boy as he ever shot it well in SEC play Jeffrey Taylor is shooting it at 52 percent from three-point range in conference action and against South Carolina their last time out he was only one for eight with four points so this is a big afternoon for him to have a bounce back day and see if he can get the range again Kevin Stallings telling us before the game I think we're good enough to beat this Kentucky team we had our chances in the first meeting nice. and a turnover yeah nice step in there by Taylor Jenkins jump shot doesn't go rebound foot four saved by Goldburn but he saved it to the wrong team Kentucky is running Kid Gilchrist slicing to the rim and he lays it in using his body to lean in on Azili to get the deuce and that's what Kid Gilchrist wants to do and is very good at it getting in the open floor making things happen and push the tempo a little bit I have to go back to 2007 the last time Vanderbilt defeated Kentucky at Rupp Taylor on the outside. Kid Gilchrist draws the assignment. First time these teams met this year, not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago, Bandy was down 14 at the half. Azili, the turnaround doesn't go. Floating away from the shot blocker just then a bit. Kid Gilchrist, kick out for Teague. Last meeting between these two teams, it was Teague scoring 13 points, dishing out eight assists, only one turnover against Vanderbilt. Davis on the perimeter. Brazili's comfortable with him there, but now Davis will cut towards the rim. Jones, outside T. And a travel called against the freshman Marcus T. Well, you take a look at Kid Gilchrist on the break, going down the floor. He finds a way to use that body to zigzag a little bit. And then down defensively, we talked about the best shot blocker in the United States. You've got to really put the body into him a little bit more. Don't allow... Anthony Davis to get a touch of separation. When he gets the separation, that's when he's very, very good defensively. Darius Miller checks in, replacing Terrence Jones. Jenkins off the stop and go. The floater short. Rebound. Goldberg got his hands on it. Azili now in a Kentucky crowd. Taken away. Kid Gilchrist and a tie-up. Possession arrow to Kentucky. 50 consecutive home wins for the Kentucky Wildcats. 49 have come here at Rupp, the other at Memorial. Harvard, the second longest active home winning streak with 28 in a row. Vanderbilt with a 4-2 lead on John Calipari's squad. Just about three minutes gone by. Vanderbilt one of five so far, but they do have three offensive rebounds. Kentucky only one field goal attempt, two turnovers. Yeah, and so far, Vanderbilt keeping this guy Davis away from the glass. Davis, oh, it goes down and a foul. Anthony Davis with a flail going towards the rim. One of the best ways to go against the big guy is to get him, get him moving defensively. Not much of a foul just then on the way towards the basket. Let's see if there's a late bump. I'm not sure about that one. I think the big guy in Azili, you, look, you see him look at the official and say, I didn't even really hit him that much. I think it was more Davis losing his balance and stumbling than anything, but what a finish. And Kentucky now with a 5-4 lead. Steve Chingang in there for Vanderbilt. Jenkins keep it on the perimeter. Goldberg. Chingang does have pretty good range on his shot. Taylor now one on one with Miller, the senior. Switch off, trying to circle around Davis. Goldberg with nine to shoot. Fake spin. Count it. Pretty play by Lance Goldberg. Yeah, you'll see Vanderbilt try to put the ball on the floor as much as they can in terms of really pressure in the defense. When they do that, like any defense, you have to rotate. Nice step across defensively. Goldberg with a steal. Streaks in for the bucket. Goldberg very active, Ian. Not only at the defensive end, but we've seen him already get a couple of rebounding opportunities, keep the ball alive. And we take a look at the Offense, put the ball on the floor, stop, look at the defenders. Everybody's watching the show. Great finish early there by Vandy. Kentucky is 27-1. Back on December the 10th, the Wildcats suffered their only loss of the season. Christian Watford of Indiana, the three-pointer at the buzzer. And the Hoosiers with a 73-72 win. They stormed the court in Bloomington. But that's it. The only blemish 
you know, some teams can't handle the pressure of being the number one team in the country and having that X on their back. Kentucky has been able to deal with it. They're 10 and one of the number one team. Miller is off the mark. Offensive rebound to Gilchrist. It was blocked on the inside, and Davis sticks with the play. He gets the deuce. And that's what Kevin Stallings, the coach of Vanderbilt, was concerned with, their length, their size down deep. And that was a great example of just how Anthony Davis has been playing at the offensive end of the floor, and especially getting the glass play. Here's Taylor, picked up by Miller. 8-7, Vanderbilt. Post up, Goldberg. Miller went for the steal and a tie-up. Possession arrow to Vanderbilt. So the Commodores will retain it. When we come back, first half action continues in Lexington. Some headlines around college basketball. Jamichael Green of Alabama reinstated. He is available tonight against Mississippi State. Louisville head coach Rick Pitino nominated for the Basketball Hall of Fame. And UConn head man Jim Calhoun. We wish him all the best. He will undergo back surgery on Monday. Here in Kentucky, Anthony Davis putting together a highlight reel as expected. And it is very difficult to believe sometimes he's only a freshman, but his length Here's that little scoop shot going to the basket, getting better and better, and then keep him off the offensive class. He always hangs around, working it with Jones. Both of those guys big, one's burly, the other's skinny, but they get the job done on the offensive glass for Kentucky and John Calipari. Anthony Davis in the first meeting against Vanderbilt, 15 points, eight rebounds, seven blocks. Vanderbilt with some changes. Kedron Johnson in, Rod Odom in as well. A freshman and a sophomore. Nine to shoot. There's Taylor. Davis with him. Taylor. Block. It was Jones and Davis collaborating. Kid Gilchrist knifing his way to the hoop. The defense once again triggering the offense. Kentucky is the best in the country, really. It's shutting you down from a field goal percentage standpoint. They help very, very well. They pressure on the perimeter, but boy, if they can funnel you to the big guys, that's a home run for them. Jenkins trying to get involved here. He pops. Missed it. Azili rebound. Stick back. No. Odom got his hand on it, but Kentucky comes away with it. Working around the perimeter. Miller steps into the three. And it's knocked out of bounds. That easily could have been a foul as Davis was throwing his body around. Look at the collapse. Though. Two guys right here, and off they go to the right side of the floor. And that's the ninth big move that you mentioned. Firm slices through, uses his body and his strength to make things happen. It's 6'7", 230. Kid Gilchrist is alone when he gets his momentum going towards the hoop. Anthony Davis leads the nation in blocks, averaging just under five per game. That's what they want to do right here. Let's see what he does with it. Post up, Azili missed the jump hook. Yep, Officials thought it was a flop by Davis. Yeah, he's rushing himself a little bit. On the open, we talked about the poise, the patience, the post up. He has to have all three of those. That'll lead to his performance down deep, which has not been there on the offensive glass. Fifth year senior, averaging 10 points, five rebounds, 2.2 blocks per game for Vandy. Miller, the drive on Johnson, and a foul called out front against the freshman from Lewisburg, Tennessee. March Madness is right around the corner. Sign up now at cbssports.com slash brackets to be notified when the bracket games launch. Davis will sit with five points, two rebounds, and two blocks. And Kyle Wiltjer, freshman, McDonald's All-American from Portland, Oregon, checks in for the first time. Wiltjer trying to work his way inside against Odom. Here's Teague on the perimeter. 9-8, Kentucky. Comes back to our cut, a little low on the pass, but a deflection. So last touch by Vanderbilt. Kentucky will retain it with 19 to shoot. You see it off the dribble. And a nice job there turning around just at the last second by Taylor to get his hand on the ball. Jones spin, Azili holds his ground. Kick out for T, 12 to shoot. Nice defensive effort there by Azili. Let's see at the other end without Davis if they attack also down deep. Shot clock winding down. T, the blow by to the hoop, and he missed the layup. Wow. Don't get many easier than that. Vanderbilt, since that loss to Kentucky, has won three in a row. 59-48 victory over South Carolina on Wednesday night. The back in. That's nice. Azili using the window. That's great execution and a terrific call by Kevin Stallings. Davis is on the bench. 
Who's going to block the shots? Jones will get a piece of him every so often, but not like Davis in terms of the hurries and deflections. Kentucky, a 73-64 win at Mississippi State on Tuesday night. A 15-2 run to end the game in Starkville. Jumper doesn't go. It was flat from Miller. That's another attack opportunity. Jenkins to the hoop, squeezes it home, and a foul. Very, very smart adjustment on the fly. They have to take advantage of when Anthony Davis is getting a rest, or if he ever gets into foul trouble, but come right at you. And I love the way that Jenkins, watch this little piece of action where he throws his body at the defender before he shoots the ball. I think if Anthony Davis is defending on that same play iron, I think that's what I'm thinking early. Body him first. If he blocks it after the body, maybe I'll get a call. John Jenkins trying to become the first man to lead the SEC in scoring in back-to-back -back years since Ronnie Henderson of LSU did it in 1995-96. And now Jenkins will get a breather. So Dejon Parker has come on. That's the freshman Johnson and the freshman Parker in the backcourt for Vanderbilt in a tough environment. Davis is back in for Kentucky. Post up, Jones leans in. Good help there by Taylor just to alter the delivery, and it's knocked out of bounds. Kentucky will hold on to it. The first meeting with these two teams played, Vanderbilt played a zone. Kevin Stallings was telling us one time in the first half, and they went down. They switched that up in the second half, had a much, much more success. Kentucky won that game 69 to 63. Right. They held Vanderbilt scoreless over the final four minutes and six seconds. Vandy had a lead at home, thinking they were going to finally put an SEC loss on this Kentucky team. Team high off the window and an opportunity for three. And in that game, Ian Anthony Davis had two big blocks down the stretch. And Teague just a little too fast. Around the corner again, turns it. Where's the help? It's a little late. Ezeli is not there. He's got to step across right now and get in the way, but he's not. And Teague, you know, gets criticized a little bit because he's not the typical John Calabari point guard in the past, but he's not really built that way either. Well, he's not putting up the numbers that Rose put up or Wall put up or Knight last exactly. year. Exactly. But his, his assist to turnover ratio after over the last seven games has gotten better and better. He's running the court better, getting the assignments down, and that's why they almost have six guys in double figures scoring. He's been a good floor general for yeah. directing this offense for Kentucky. The team's number one in the country. Their point guard's doing something right. Taylor, off-balance delivery and a soft touch for Jeffrey Taylor, senior from Sweden. And he has raised his level of play. Consistency had been his issue through the first three years of his collegiate career. He's got five points. Vanderbilt with a 15-12 lead. Lamb can't get it to drop, but the follow goes down. Kentucky crashing the offensive board. They understand very well where their shots are coming from in the offense. And when you have that, it allows your offensive front line to really be in better positions rebounding the ball. So put two on the board for Terrence Jones. That one bounced off the knee of Azili. Parker trying to save, and he's out of bounds. Turnover, Vanderbilt. And the big front line going to work for Kentucky. Put a soft shot up there, and how do you keep Jones off the glass? It's a little too late. Inching closer to Selection Sunday, some teams that may have some work to do to get in. Texas, 17-11, they've lost their last two. Arizona's 29, but the RPI is 67. And Miami, 16-10, and 10. Jim Laranega squad does have a huge win at Duke. Some potential bubble teams as well, Jimmy. Yeah, and interesting enough, for teams like this, this is where almost the sense of urgency comes in, like it's March Madness already. Sometimes you think one and done, and maybe I'm not going to get in. But I like Cincinnati right here, Ryan. Take a look. Even though the RPI 74, 5-3 and three in the last line, but they're 10-5 and five in the conference in the Big East, I think there's a number in the 92 percentage of all Big East teams that finish at 500 or better are selected. So I don't know if those stats play out at the end of the day, but I like Cincinnati right now. And playing well towards the end Bingo. of the season, good which point. sometimes works in your favor. Yep, good point. 15-14 Vanderbilt. Looking to go right now for the first time. Let's see how they handle it here. Miller drives into that ball. Slam down. It's Davis smothering the ball for the flush. And that was one of the points that Kevin Stalling said. He said, if I go to zone, it's kind of like pick your poison against them. You force the ball on the outside, hopefully, but they're big enough and long enough to go over the top 
And this is almost like it's a lob dunk the way Davis just controls everything. Quick shot doesn't go down. Kentucky comes the other way with T. Miller now. Ball fake. A lob. For Terrence Jones. Very similar to the last play, even though one was a shot, one's a pass. That's what happens when you come through the lane. How the game has changed over the years, Ian, is when you have guys who can dunk the ball, you can go up. And that was a good pass, and you can just throw it up there. In the old days, you had to make a good basketball bounce pass and get it around the defender. Now they go upstairs with it. Very effective. Into the hands of Jenkins. Kentucky now with a three-point lead. And this is where the Vandy poise, their experience has to come through. Chin Gang gives it up for Tinsley to the corner. Hunter fires off the rim on a deep one. Teague now pushing tempo. Good find. It's Miller from the perimeter. Long rebound. Kid Gilchrist got bumped by Parker. And a foul called against the freshman. Kentucky with the guards. They play it. They break you down. They get you reacting. Watch the reaction. Defensively, you step up. And at that particular point, there's nobody home because oh, only have a foot to finish. I mean, it's they use it as well as any team in the country with Jones and especially Davis at the offense. Four team fouls against Vanderbilt. Two against Kentucky. Kid Gilchrist off the dribble drive. Long three team. Wow. Look at the length inside. Kid Gilchrist unable to finish it. Jones tried to tap it towards the rim. And now Vandy comes the other way. Yep, their opportunities. Brad Tinsley, the senior from Oregon City, Oregon. Taylor short. Long rebound. Kid Gilchrist now on the move. Kentucky. T back to Kid Gilchrist for the bucket. You know, it's so smart by Kid Gilchrist. If you give the basketball up like he did, about 25 to 30 feet away. One of the tricks in basketball is guess who's going to get the layup? The guy who gives the ball up at that particular point. It's an 8-0 run for Kentucky in a 20 to 15 lead. Skip pass. Tinsley sticks the three. Brad Tinsley shooting it at 41% from three-point range this season. 20 to 18, Kentucky. So he's cool. slowing it down. Yeah, and so far, I when Kentucky has made a little bit of a run or a spectacular play, Vandy's been able to settle it down and come down with some poise. Remember, Kentucky was down go. at halftime against Mississippi State. And a foul called. Off the entry feed. Here we go. We're off to the races. See that quick pass right there? That allows you to get running down the floor. Kid Gilchrist that trip because he understands his responsibility of passing the ball is done and then he can fill the lane, which normally you want the ball in the middle of the floor because it went to the right. He then fills the middle, so they still have an advantage. Second foul on Terrence Jones. Nice cut. Bullet feet inside. Azile blocked by Davis. And a foul called. Miller came over to help. And Davis had him on the front side. It's going to work against the Kentucky big man. You see, Azili did not catch the ball real well just then, and that caused some problems. Fortunately, he ends up getting to the line right now. If he caught that cleanly, Davis was out of position. He could have laid it right in for an easy one. Kentucky trailed 41-28 to at halftime on Tuesday against Mississippi State. Biggest deficit of the season. Jimmy, let's check out more now on Festus Azili, the fifth-year senior. Well, one of the keys is making sure he paints the lane on the offensive end and establish the post side, but really the impact has to be at both ends of the floor. He has struggled a little bit with his knee problems. Coming along, he plays hard. Great kid. He just has to really establish himself and stay away from the foul trouble. Sprain right knee didn't play until December 7th against Davidson when he made his season debut. Azili shoots it at 60% of the free throw line. Lane violation against Kid Gilchrist. So Azili will get another chance here. And an opportunity to tie this game up at 20. 13 points, 6 rebounds in the first meeting two weeks ago. And it goes down as Davis may have touched it. We're tied at 20. Four points now for Festus Azili. Major improvement as an offensive player over his time at Vanderbilt. That's a double points scoring seven of the last eight. Lamb's been quiet. What a one-hander, Deron Lamb. Lamb comes in averaging just under 14 points per game. The sophomore from Queens, New York has given Kentucky a two-point lead.
Down to 8.25 to play, first half, post up. Azili going strong, and it goes down for Festus Azili. And I and I would add to the word strong quickly also. Catch it and make a quick move on it. Don't let Davis get himself time defensively. Nice job by Azili. All of Kentucky's baskets have come deep in the paint. Nothing from the perimeter so far for the Wildcats. Davis rolling to the rim. That's Anthony Davis showing off his ability getting to the basket. Kentucky now has 22 of 24 points in the paint area to your point. Goldburn, the reach in. Lance Goldburn will shoot a pair when we come back. 7.44 to play. First half. Tight first half here in Lexington, 24 to 22, as we check out the game summary. Kentucky shooting it at 50%, but have not done a lot from the perimeter. All of their activity has been in the paint. As we welcome you back, Ian Eagle along with Jim Spinarkle here at Rupp. You can understand that teams would be intimidated by right. Kentucky. So many weapons on offense and certainly the best defensive team in the country. Right. You don't get the sense Vanderbilt is the least bit intimidated, though. Not at all. I think their experienced big three are really holding their own right now. I think they've reacted to some of the quick outs in the transition basketball by Kentucky, but Kentucky is just dominating, and I mean dominating yeah. the paint area. That's the key so far. They're so long, they're so big, but they position themselves so well. Look at where they're starting their jumps. It's not like they're coming from long range to get offensive rebounds. And Kid Gilchrist running the floor with transition a couple of times. So nice balance in terms of the touches, but the balance has shifted underneath the basket big time for Kentucky. Yeah, you know, one thing that has stood out about this Kentucky team, they are very unselfish. Mm -hmm. The egos seem to be in check. They share the ball. They've got fantastic freshmen, and obviously that's what John Calipari has done at Memphis and at Kentucky. But he continues to pick the right guys. Blue chippers, right. yes, but a good blend. Goldburn at the free throw line. Monday, Dave's all new with Ed Helms. Plus, later in the week, Neil Patrick Harris, John Hamm, and Paulie Perrette. Then catch Craig, only CBS. And I, and to your point there, I think when you look at teams that have talent, like Kentucky does, I never get the impression that one guy or two guys need to be, and I emphasize the word need, need to be the highest scorer. They seem to be happy with distributing it. They seem to be happy with winning, and sometimes that's very difficult to do in this day and age, keep everybody happy. Last NCAA title came in 1998 for Kentucky, and this team certainly has a chance to go in as the number one overall seed, depending upon how the next two weeks shake out. There's Miller, a back in on Tinsley. Double team comes from Jenkins. Chuck Rock is down to eight. Good reaction right there to help Tinsley out with that size advantage. Teague directing traffic, three to shoot. Teague flips it over to Lamb. High arcing delivery, it's an air ball. And a shot clock violation. Kentucky is now 0 of 5 from three-point range. Well, lucky the shot clock wound down on that one because there would have been an offensive rebounding opportunity, but well played by Vanderbilt on the perimeter. Good help with the double team and helping Tinsley out on the wing. Vanderbilt 7-15 and 15 all time against the number one team in the country. A chance to clip number one today and end a 50-game home winning streak for Kentucky. Big offensive rebound for Taylor off the Tinsley miss. Yeah, that was a big timer, too. Taylor, the zigzag, slides. A little too much, it's a travel. And you notice why did he slide? Normally, against most competitors, he would not have slid because, Kevin Stallings mentioned it before, Anthony Davis is always lurking around, and that was Davis again, sitting back, waiting for a block opportunity. Kevin Stallings telling us, their big three has to be who they are, live up to their numbers. The margin of error is so small against this Kentucky team, and a foul call going towards the basket. And free throws coming up for Davis. So Taylor there defensively picks up his first. Davis at the line. That is the fifth team foul against Vanderbilt. Five against Kentucky. Anthony Davis, the freshman from Chicago. Give us your scouting report on Anthony Davis, Jim. Well, obviously we've spoken about it. 
the ultimate alternator down deep. He just goes after every shot. He's very, very good at the spacing. Tenacious on the board at both ends. And the question mark was, how is his offensive game going to improve? We've already seen him put the ball on the floor a couple of times. We know he can hit the offensive glass. He's worked on his 15-foot jumper, so offensively starting to creep into where he was in high school. And his comfort level now is so obvious to watch him early in the season. And now Jenkins, leaner, doesn't go. Yep. Rebounded by Miller. Kentucky with a 26-24 lead. We approach six minutes left. Teague, the blow-by as Tinsley was left standing there. Marcus Teague, the acceleration to the hoop. In the first battle that these guys had, that same scenario came out. Tinsley loses the ball. Kid Gilchrist, look out on the open floor. Oh, big finish. Kid Gilchrist taking it right to the basket. Taylor trying to get out of his way a little bit, and very infrequently do you see a guy with the strength and the stamina to fly down the floor. Watch how he dunks this with his right hand going towards his left in the drift. Man, was that ever a dunk. Tomorrow on CBS, the amazing race is off to Argentina. Don't miss a new episode. That's tomorrow only. CBS. Vanderbilt talked about how the big three have to at least maintain their numbers, if not go above it. This is what they look like so far. Well, they're going against some pretty good defense also, and I think one of the things to watch for is Azili. I think he's getting pushed around just a little bit down deep by Davis when he's trying to establish his position. So I think Vanderbilt would like to get him the touches down in the post area. Kentucky with a 30 to 24 lead on Vanderbilt. We have 545 remaining in this first half. Vanderbilt enters action third in the SEC, one game behind Florida. Of course, Kentucky leading the way at 13 and 0. Jenkins lines it up. Fade away, no. Offensive rebound, Taylor. So a new shot clock for Vanderbilt to work with here. Jenkins pump. Miller sticks with him. Taylor the drive and a foul called out front. Kid Gilchrist will pick it up on the perimeter. Little pressure with the basketball. A lot of people think it's only pressure from the defensive side of the ball. And that call right in front of John Calipari did not like the call. But I like the effort by Taylor putting it on the floor that caused some action. Vanderbilt shooting it at 36% from the field. Kentucky's at 52%. We come up on five minutes to play. First half. Jenkins getting the step back to him. Oh, Another denial for Davis as he got Goldberg. Teague snakes his way to the hoop. Teague is just so crafty in terms of directing the offense and making his decisions. Another look at a guy who's right-handed goes strongly to his left and uses that right to quicken the angle to the basket to get his shot off. Seven points for Teague. 8 0 run. Jump shot goes down for Taylor. It's a three. Jeffrey Taylor. He's got that smooth delivery. Eight points now for the senior. Back into the zone right now, and they need Jenkins to get untracked. He's only one for six from the floor. 32-27, Wildcats. Davis, high arcing delivery. Anthony Davis opening up the repertoire. He's got 13. The improvement at the offensive end, they really don't need him to shoot the ball all that much, but he can shoot it from there. Second in the country in field goal percentage, 65%. Ricardo Ratliff is number one from Missouri. Taylor, baseline delivery, book it. Yeah, they needed Taylor after his one for eight against South Carolina to get his confidence back. Only two games this year where he's gone under double digits, basically, so it's good to see him come out and really retrack himself. He had only four points in that win over the Gamecocks on Wednesday night. 34-29, 3.47 counting left in this first half. Kid Gilchrist draws Goldberg. Jumper, lamb, no good. Out of bounds, last touch by Davis. Vanderbilt will have the basketball. When we come back, Anthony Davis putting up huge numbers once again for Kentucky. Coming up, at and at the half. Greg Gumbel, Greg Anthony, Seth Davis, all the scores and highlights, the latest NCAA tournament news. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. Anthony Davis.
He can take other big men off the dribble, and he can also make plays on that end of the floor like nobody else. He really never loses his composure at any, either end of the floor. The ability to shoot the ball now, he can hit that 12 to 15 foot jumper. Watch out offensively, but the package is there. I mean, he's so talented, and he does it so smoothly that you just kind of look past him sometimes, mm -hmm. but his three blocks, he keeps the ball in play pretty much all the time. There's a large percentage of times when he blocks the shot, he keeps it in play, and if they get it, it triggers fast break opportunities for them. This Kentucky team so talented. Championship teams under Tubby Smith and Rick Pitino were deeper right. than this team for John Calipari, but Kevin Stolich said it probably helps them. They can play through their mistakes. They don't have to look over their shoulders. The drive, count it. Good play by Dejan Parker, a hybrid guard out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And he cuts into the Kentucky lead, 34 to 31. And one of the few times there wasn't anybody home just then defensively. Davis, usually that's the type he tracks, but he lifted himself out to about 12 feet on that initial defensive set. Here's Lamb on the outside, Taylor there defensively. 15 to shoot, under three minutes to play. And Lamb gives it away. Numbers, Goldburn driving to the hoop. He lays it in. Vanderbilt has cut it to one. I like that play by Azili just then, too. I have to notice big fella trying to track it at half court. I'm not going to take this thing and, and try to dribble all the way down the rest of the way. Give it to a smaller guy. Goldburn has hit his season average. Nine points in the first half. Miller tried to lob it upstairs towards Davis and Kid Gilchrist. And it's intercepted by Vanderbilt. Commodores with a chance to take the lead here. Tinsley gives up his dribble. Post up Azili on a kick out. 9-2 run for Vandy. Tinsley, little shake and bake. Off the double. Goldberg couldn't catch it cleanly. 17 to shoot. One on one. Azili jump hook. Bank shot, no. And rebounded by T. His instincts are better now. He's going quicker. T, the penetration. Swatted by Azili. Big time block by Festus Azili out of bounds. Well, you take a look down deep. Where is he's over here to the right side? Watch the roll now. Everybody comes back. Where is the big fella? He's not there getting back for the very, probably the first time this afternoon. They vacated inside. He stepped away about 12 feet away. I'm not so sure he has to go that far out on the floor to defend on a jump shot because Azili hasn't proven he's going to knock that one back. 34-33, Kentucky under two minutes to play now. First half here at Ruck. Post-up opportunity for Miller. Taylor there defensively. Miller kick out for Teague. He'll fire the three. He doesn't get the roll, and Goldburn with a rebound. There's Tinsley getting Vanderbilt into its offense. Tinsley a three. He's fouled in the act, and three free throws coming for Brad Tinsley. So the personal foul assessed on Lamb. And Tinsley, an 84% shooter, heads to the line. Tinsley had just a split second to get that shot off, and the defender on the right side. You better make sure you stay clear on the right side or you're going to get caught. Brad Tinsley, combo guard, who has become more of a point guard in the latter part of his Vanderbilt career. He's turned into a pretty good facilitator yeah. for this Commodore's offense. Led the SEC in assists last season. 7-0 run now for Vanderbilt and a two-point lead for the Commodores. This senior class, this is the only arena that they have not won in in the SEC at Ruck. Chin Gang is in for Vanderbilt. Yeah, he's got to back off Davis that far out. 15 to shoot. Teague using the high screen for Miller. Teague against Tinsley. Gives it up. Kid Gilchrist rims it up. Rims out, rebounded by Tinsley, and some activity down low. A foul called against Vanderbilt. Kentucky is 0 of 8 from three-point territory. Again, all Kentucky field goals have come in the paint in this first half. Teague triggers in with a new shot clock to work with. We approach one minute to play, first half. Kentucky undefeated the SEC 13-0. Kid Gilchrist gives up his dribble, down to 51 seconds to play. They should post Kid Gilchrist against Tinsley down low. Now why are you guarding him that tightly out front? I'll never know. 
And team the team game. foul starting to pile up now. Yeah, team game that time. I am why if Davis is just going to come out and set a high screen, I'm not so sure I'd have him even that close to him. I'd have him five feet behind and let my guard play play the decision himself. Because what will happen on that play is defender will get caught out high. Davis will start to drift and roll. And they'll end up getting a dunk on him down deep. Second personal on Chin Gang. Davis is five of five from the field. Three of three from the free throw line. The one and one. And it goes down for Anthony Davis. 14 points in this first half. Vanderbilt up by one. Davis. And the Wildcats are five of five from the line. Now, six of six as a team. Doesn't shoot like a uh, big guy, does he? He's no. got a nice fluid motion to his shot. Tinsley gives it up. Jenkins fires. He's had a tough time getting clean looks. Yeah, Lamb on him right there. And it just stayed with him in that circular offensive motion without the basketball. He is one of seven from the field, 0 of two from three-point range. The leading scorer in the SEC at 20 points per game. Kentucky will hold for one. 14 seconds left. First half. There's Teague being defended by Jenkins. Kid Gilchrist, five seconds left. Makes his move. Lost the ball. Tinsley poked out of his hands and a reach-in foul. Kid Gilchrist. Tinsley is going to the free throw line with 3.2. Well, the squeeze, watch the squeeze right in the middle of the floor defensively, and now all of a sudden you have to reach for the basketball after the turnover. You know, and speaking with Kevin Stallings before the game, interesting part, he wasn't bragging about his team. He was saying, you know, we're probably one of the few teams in this league that have a chance of beating this team. He's right. Yep. And you know what? If I'm looking at this, Jenkins is one for seven from the floor, and I don't know how it's going to end with 3.2 seconds left, but if I'm up or tied at this game going into the half, boy, am I ecstatic if I'm Vanderbilt right now. Second personal on Kid Gilchrist. Tinsley one out of two. Kid Gilchrist, one second. Half-court heave at the hole. Tried to bank it in. Off the mark, and Vanderbilt ends the half on a 13-4 run. Vanderbilt with a 37-36 lead over the number one team in the country, Kentucky. Right now, let's head to New York and send it to Greg Gumbel. CBS Sports NCAA basketball coverage is sponsored by Chrysler, imported from Detroit. Lowe's, Lowe's, never stop improving. And by Wheat Thins, made with 100% toasted whole grain crunch. Just about set for second half action here at Rupp. Vanderbilt leading Kentucky 37 to 36 moments ago. Commodore's head man Kevin Stallings met with his coaches. Defensive suggestions? Got to rebound better. They got more of their misses than we do. Do they? Yes. Keep on the lane. Help. Big time help. Off certain guys like Kentucky. Big time in the gaps. Keep. Davis and Gilchrist. Davis. Davis. Teague's been traced. They made an outside jumper yet. Our transition. We got transition. We got a couple better. We got a couple little bit better transition. Hi, and Eagle Jim Spinarco back with you here in Lexington. Kevin Stallings and his staff in a unique position. They actually right. have a lead at halftime against Kentucky. And I think they broke it down with his assistants pretty well. I think Gilchrist is one of the keys in terms of the way he's turned the corner, so I think they're going to kind of lay back a little bit on him, mm -hmm. make him shoot the ball. They also talked about hitting the defensive glass. Offensively, Kentucky has more rebounds. You heard that message in terms of let's get better on the glass. They're not shooting the ball well. Kentucky from the outside, push it out to the perimeter. Take a look at the Bud Light first half stats. Vanderbilt doesn't shoot it well, 41%, but they make some threes. Kentucky doesn't make any, and they go to the free throw line. Twice as many attempts as the Wildcats. In the paint, it's been all Kentucky, but no perimeter presence here for John Calipari so far. Thirty-seven, thirty-six. as we start play in this second half. Kentucky with a 50-game home winning streak. Team, the pop doesn't go. Davis, the offensive rebound. Davis, turnaround with the left hand. Gives Kentucky a one-point lead. Well, that part of the strategy didn't work on the first possession. 
for Vanderbilt, keeping him off the glass. We saw a little follow-up there with the left hand for Anthony Davis. Half-court set here for Vanderbilt. Taylor feeds it down low. Azili takes it at Kid Gilchrist. Now it's Goldburn. Off the dribble, and the jumper doesn't go. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Goldburn. Well, Jeffrey Taylor was one of the big three that really came to play this afternoon. And if you're Vanderbilt and only one of three played well in the first half, you have to be happy shooting the basketball, looking for his opportunities. The other two in that big three, Jenkins and Azili, and Jenkins struggled in the first half for Vanderbilt. Here's Jones one-on-one -on -one with Goldburn. Jones limited action in that first half. Well, he's going to call going the other way with a big clear out and extension. So that'll be the third foul on Terrence Jones. He's been limited to four points and three rebounds. Watch the right side of the screen right here. Watch that elbow to the jaw. If it's down low, maybe in the waist area for a little clear out, maybe you get away with that. But you go above the shoulders, and that is an easy one for the officiating crew. So Jones is on the bench. Darius Miller is in. Here's Taylor on the outside. Vanderbilt trying to go back in front. Just over a minute gone by in this second half. Jenkins, the jumper, no. Offensive rebound, Taylor in a reset. Taylor lets it fly. That doesn't go for three. Rebound, knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Azili. Good work by Azili on the right side just then, but Jenkins had a good look. I thought that was a pretty big shot for them. If he can get on track, it gives them another offensive weapon outside, and Taylor's shot looked right on to me also. Wildcats lead all of college basketball in field goal defense. Opponents shooting 36% against Kentucky. Kid Gilchrist, the back in on Tinsley. The turnaround. Swing down. It's Davis crashing the boards for the flush. He gets up so quickly and so high that sometimes it appears as if he's over the rim. Nice post up there, though, by Kid Gilchrist taking advantage of the the size seven foot four inch wingspan for Davis and it's going the other way on the setup by Vanderbilt watch a little post up move here coming into the lane he's gonna make it an easy shot look at Davis tracking the ball and finishing it off boy is he ever big in and you wonder sometimes he does it so fast it's a total clearance and by that I mean away from the basket away from the cylinder Festus Azili called him a foul 17.45 mark, second half, Teague into the lane, the pop goes. Marcus Teague off the penetration. He's mixing it up very nicely this afternoon. Little drives to the basket, there is a little touch freeze move there, if you notice. Throws the defender until he made his decision, and then went offensively. Jenkins, the jump shot, a clean look at a three. John Jenkins shooting it at 46% from three-point territory. Really a gifted scorer. And I and he leads the NCAA and makes a 3.9 for a game. So he really needs to get the rhythm going at the uh, three-point strike. And he plays with a lot of confidence, even though he struggled in that first half. You don't think it's necessarily going to affect him in the second half. They'll keep hoisting up shots. Teague one-on-one -on -one with Jenkins, gives it up. Lamb off the feet. Kid Gilchrist blocked by Taylor. He tried to cut the ball and buy himself some time, and it's out of bounds. Vanderbilt will take over. Taylor was terrific on his reaction defensively that trip. And you're right about Jenkins. You know, guys who shoot and can sh lead, lead the SEC in shooting, scoring type, they don't worry that much about how poorly they've shot the ball in the first half. He hit that last shot. Let's see if they go to him a little bit more. 13 Kentucky turnovers. Chin gang down low. Turn. Greens in. Wow. Davis with the block. He didn't even have to move. Right in his drill. Fourth block for Anthony Davis. 42 to 40, Wildcats. We approach 16 minutes to play, second half. Here's Teague out front for Davis. Chin game there defensively. I don't think you have to pressure him way outside. Davis getting to the rim, and the floater doesn't go, but a foul. All right, let me ask you a quick question. Have you seen him pull up from 18 to 20 feet off the dribble yet? Not today, no. <laughs> I don't think he's going to do it. So why guard him out there? And But he will go by as a big guy. And that's number three on Steve Chingang, the senior from Cameroon. Anthony Davis, 19 points, seven rebounds, four blocks. He has not missed a shot.
Seven of seven from the field, five of five from the free throw line. And of course, there's a miss there at the strike. Monday on CBS, TV comedy doesn't get any more awesome than this. Catch a new episode of How I Met Your Mother. Monday, only CBS. 70% of the free throw line this season for Davis. An absolute game changer. Both ends of the floor. 20 points now for the freshman. Kentucky 7 of 8 from the free throw line. Three point lead for the Wildcats. Jenkins just can't find a crease there off the dribble. Goldburn can. To the rim. Off the back of the iron. Goldburn trying to bounce it off Kentucky. He does with Miller coming over on the baseline. So Vanderbilt will retain it with 15.45 remaining in the second half. Tight one. Jim, I know you a long time. I know you enjoy being in the hot seat. I do. Tournament you. selection, the committee, this is what they face. Here's four resumes of teams that could be a candidate for the tournament. Which team would you pick blindly just looking right. at the numbers? Looking at the numbers, I think I'm going to go with Team CI. I'm going to tell you why. The conference record, guessing that this team has been fighting pretty good in their conference at 7 and 9. Their RPI, not bad, but look at the 4 of 8 against the top 50. Well, there you go. Here's the okay. big reveal. That would be West Virginia. Now you know the teams. Would you still go with West Virginia? Well, last night was tough down the stretch against Marquette. But, yeah, I might just lead towards them. So here you go, two weeks from tomorrow, these four teams very well could be in the conversation for the selection committee, and they'll have those back and forths about who belongs in and who's not going to get a spot. Jenkins off the inbounds, three ball doesn't go, tip in does, and it's Festus Azili on the inside. He camped himself right in front of the rim, and he gets his eighth point of the day. Yeah, Davis got knocked down by Azili, I believe. Already came out of there running just a little soft on the legs. Kentucky leads 43-42 to 42 over Vanderbilt. Terrence Jones back in for the Wildcats. Teague setting up shot with 13 to shoot. One-on-one -on -one with Jenkins. Not a lot of man movement in this half-court set. Shot clock is down to six. Teague will make his move off a crossover. Shot clock down to three. They got nothing going on here. Knocked out of bounds with two to shoot. And a much better job just then by Azili just then. Davis was a high screen, but he backed off five feet and let the guard play the guard. Only two seconds on the timer. Kid Gilchrist. Get it in. Davis didn't catch it cleanly, but still converts on the inside. You could just see it coming. Little slice cut to the basket. Thought they were going to go high. They decided to go low. You just cannot have that pass. It's like an inbounds pass under your own basket. You have to force it away. You got him as player of the year? Anthony Davis, Division I player of the year in your eyes? Yes. Jenkins lines it up. Bottom on a three. Yeah, I think, I think he's shown so much, Ian. We know at the defensive end of the floor with Anthony Davis how good he is. But quite candidly, in a month or so since we've seen him last, his offensive game is starting to mature. 22 points, 8 rebounds for Davis. Jenkins now with 9 points on 3 of 11 from the field. Lamb, clean look. Book it. A 3. Deron Lamb shooting it at 49% from three-point territory. And when they get the three to go, it opens up the interior play and also the slashes to the basket. And the first jumper, period, from the perimeter to go down. Taylor the spin. And Kentucky now on the move. Kid Gilchrist to T, cuts to the rim. Nice play, a good maneuver by T to put Kentucky in front. 50 to 45. And I think we've seen three times this afternoon where Vanderbilt got by Anthony Davis was not a factor and they missed easy shots. Packed house here at Rupp. Fans are on their feet. Jenkins on the outside. Goldburn now. 15 to shoot. Jenkins. The lob. Ozili the catch. And a foul called on the floor. Davis defending Ozili. Well you take a look right here in the middle of the floor. Azili pushes down, 
Davis grabs the ankle a little bit, comes down to the floor. He slices to the basket, though, showing no ill effects of that little twist of the ankle. He appears to be okay going back and forth, and now he heads out to take a little breather. Taylor over Kid Gilchrist. He's fouled and a chance for three. Jeffrey Taylor is going to the free throw line after knocking that one down. Deep two-point range just inside the arc. And I like his patience on that shot, too. Sometimes watch Kid Gilchrist. He's on him right there. Davis Taylor turns, rather, and shoots the basketball as he goes by. Nice patience. And then when you got the defender on your left side, it becomes an easier look and harder for them to get a hand on the ball. Substitution for Calipari. Kid Gilchrist, his third personal foul. Taylor. 13 points, six rebounds for Jeffrey Taylor. Kentucky 50, Vanderbilt 48. Just about seven minutes gone by in the second half. Lamb, a feed inside. Knocked away by Goldburn, but a foul. I thought Goldburn did a nice job there of just moving his feet initially. Maybe a little touch late and the swipe. Team fouls, three against Vanderbilt, three against Kentucky. T gets it in for Lamb, baseline, pull up, count it. Lamb, as you touched on, I am known for his shooting, as you mentioned, right around 50%, shooting the ball from three, but when he drags you out to him and he can put that ball down for one dribble, it's a nice little floater along the baseline because defensively you're leaning and it's easier to go by a guy. Seven points for Deron Lamb. Parker working around the perimeter. Both freshmen are in, in the backcourt. Johnson and Parker for Vanderbilt. Yep. Goldberg turns, blocked by Jones. Tracked down by Lamb. And here come the Wildcats with a four-point lead. Early offense. Goldburn, good defense against Jones and last touch by Vanderbilt. Yeah, I think Goldburn was thinking, well, Davis isn't around. Who's going to get me if I go deep? And Jones has picked up the slack for Davis in helping him out when they're both on the floor or solo like that with block shots. Chin Gang comes in replacing Festus Azili. Teague taking his time, defended by Parker. Kentucky shooting it at 54% from the field, but the majority of their damage has been done inside. They're 7 of 10 from the field in the second half. Jones puts it on the floor, watch the ball. Goldburn called for the personal. So the second personal on Lance Goldburn, the versatile senior. Four team foul against Vanderbilt. Even though Jones has hit 11 threes, Ion, I'd still stay back a little bit. Don't get yourself in a tough spot. T gets it in. The drive. Aloy Vargas. Offensive foul. It's going the other way. Six foot 11 inch Aloy Vargas comes in trying to make a play for Kentucky. Just pushes off a little bit defensively. Good position outside the restricted area. That's one of the things with Kentucky. They don't have a whole lot of depth. And now the officials came together, and this might turn into a blocking foul. It will. Vargas earns a trip to the free throw line. So Anthony Jordan, Jamie Lucky, and Lee Cassell talked about it. Now Jordan... Heads down to the scorer's table. Kevin Stallings just getting away from it all for 10 seconds. I, and he just walked clearly by to the baseline to the other end of his bench. Take another look. You make the call here. And let's take a look. So it was a blocking foul called against Steve Chingay. And that was the only question for the officials. Who was it against? And that's why they took a look at the replay. If it's Chingay, it's number four. And it is. Well, on that look right there, I it sure did look like Vargas came across and initiated the contact from shoulder to chest. Let's take a better look at this high angle, and there's the reason why he's in the restricted yep. area. So that other look, we couldn't see that. Good work by the 
The crew getting that shot and getting the call right by both the officials in the truck. Good work. So the left foot remained in that restricted area. Right. And that's why it's going to work against Steve Chingay. Eloy Vargas. He is 3 of 11 from the free throw line this season. And he'll shoot a pair. Vargas at the line. Fourth foul on the physical senior chin gang. They explained it to Kevin Stallings. Vargas rims out on the first attempt. Remember, in the first meeting, Vanderbilt had a lead with just over four minutes to play at home in Nashville, only to see Kentucky contain the Commodores for the rest of the game. And they won it going away, 69-63. to 63. That was two weeks ago today. Vargas sits. Davis back in. One out of two for Vargas, and now Kentucky in front, 53-48. to 48. And the fans are getting involved, and Kentucky knows they need a good stop here defensively. Look for a transition if they can get it. So important for Vanderbilt just to play with that poise. Don't rush through your sets. Hard drive. Parker gives it up. Oh! the slam. Festus Azili put that through with tremendous velocity. <laughs> I was going to say, you can try to block that one, but that's a good judgment to stay away from it. 53 to 50. Kick out. Jones doesn't take the three. Now it's Lamb turning the corner, and the runner goes. Deron Lamb beginning to heat up in this second half. He's making the plays off the dribble, which is always nice. Another guy who can put the bounce down. Johnson gives it up. Parker to Taylor, working around the perimeter for Vanderbilt. Azili on a handoff for Parker. They tried the pick and roll and a kick. We'll get a timeout with 11.06 to play in this second half. Kentucky in front, 55 to 50. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA men's basketball will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Tournament profile, 20 and 8 this season. Conference record of 9 and 4. This is a team that was ranked number 7 in the preseason poll. Got off to a very slow start. But, Jimmy, we've seen it firsthand here. They're a very capable yes. team. And if, for some reason, they win this game, run the table, play well in the SEC tournament, maybe this is a team that could get as high as, as a four seed right. in the NCAA tournament. But if things go the other way, they could be in that seven or eight range as well. They have Florida and Tennessee on their schedule yet. They've won four out of their last five. And those two bad losses of Indiana State, Cleveland State, came in the first ten games of the season. The big three of Jenkins, Taylor, and Azili. Jenkins picking it up a bit in the second half, but has had a tough time getting good looks here. Taylor has played well, and Azili has now been much more of a factor defensively in this second half around the rim. Kentucky taking some more perimeter shots. Get it in for Parker. Gives it up. Jenkins. He went down, but no call, and he was off the mark. Teague flicks it ahead. Kip Gilchrist. It's blocked by Azili. The lob ahead. Parker. Oh, athleticism. Finishing it all in one motion as he went upstairs. This kid has got all the tools. He has not played a whole lot in his freshman season, but he's going to be a factor down the road for Kevin Stallings. What a delivery by Johnson on the run. 55-52 Kentucky. Teague. Nice hand. Saw a crack. Knocked out of there. Jones couldn't corral it. Jenkins does to the rim. Kid Gilchrist, he was tracking him the whole time. Second guy in. He does. First guy does all the work. Watch defensively. First guy gets in the way. And then kill, Kid Gilchrist comes from behind and gets all the recognition. But give Miller some praise there, too, defensively for tracking and making sure Jenkins couldn't get the angle for the layup. The leading scorer in the SEC. John Jenkins is 3 of 13 from the field. The drive. Taylor tip in. Yes. Nice extra dribble by Taylor just then. That one little push on the second bounce got him closer. He got smacked in the face coming out of there, but he seems to be okay. Taylor has 15. Kentucky's lead is 1. Vargas way outside. A handoff for Miller. The leaner. Count it. 
That mid-range game, they weren't shooting the ball well from long range. One of nine Kentucky from the three-point stripe. Just saying, let's mix it up a little bit. Let's use the dribble, get some easier shots towards the basket. And the first two of the day for Darius Miller. The drive and a foul called as Taylor took it strong towards the rim. So free throws coming up for Jeffrey Taylor. Coming up next, conference crunch time continues. Villanova takes on number nine, Georgetown. While the UCLA Bruins tangle with Arizona, then a Big 12 border battle. Third-ranked Missouri meets number four, Kansas. That's a big one coming up later here on CBS. Taylor misses on the first attempt. He's a 66% free throw shooter. Anthony Davis back in, replacing Vargas. And Lamb in for Miller. Jeffrey Taylor, his father Jeff, played at Texas Tech, then in the NBA with... Houston and Detroit before wrapping up his professional career in Sweden. Taylor missing on both attempts. Knocked around. Goldberg's got it. And a foul call. The fans react here at Rupp as Kid Gilchrist is called on the personal. And that's going to be number four on the freshman. Well, the activity, nice run just then by Goldberg to get into a position to even get a hand on the ball. Never mind getting the foul and the possession back. 15 foul against Kentucky. Whoa, High that. pass. Davis tips it over to Jones. And a two-handed slimmer. It still amazes me I in this day and age how guys have trouble getting the ball in bounds underneath their own basket. They start tossing it around. Johnson oh. gets it. Oh! Grown <laughs> man's finish for Festus Azili. Kick out. Miller lines it up. Bucket, a three. He's got the experience. He's the glue of this team. 62-56. Kentucky, nine minutes to play. Entry feed, Azili. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Kentucky. Here's that lob. Doesn't get anything going. And here's the breakaway. And then down the other end. You want to try to block a shot? Go after that one. Hey. 22 Kentucky points in transition today. They've got a 62 to 56 lead on Vanderbilt. Spread the floor with Taylor. Azile the high screen. Taylor blocked by Davis on the perimeter. That's five blocks. He's got a size advantage now. Low if they go to him fast. They're looking at him. Tinsley needs help. Now they'll switch off. Quick, quick switch. That's where Davis is deceiving to line. He'll block the shot out on the perimeter on smaller guys. Teague on the crossover. Teague turns the corner, leaves it inside. The pump. Jones gets the roll. Huge possession right here, Vandy. Yep. I like the timeout. That's a good move by Kevin Stallings and company. Just listen to this crowd now. Kentucky has equaled its largest lead, 64-56 Wildcats. CBS Sports NCAA basketball coverage is sponsored by USAA, proudly serving the financial needs of the military, veterans, and their families. The all-new Buick Verano, unexpected luxury in a car this size. And by Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. And thank you, Greg. That matchup between Missouri and Kansas coming up here on CBS. Denman and English for the Tigers and for the Jayhawks. Robinson, a National Player of the Year candidate. And Tyshawn Taylor, a lot of talent on the floor later this afternoon. Yeah, high-profile teams, high-profile individual players. What a game. It should be a whole lot of fun. Well, right now, Kentucky is trying to pull away from Vanderbilt, 64-56. to The Commodores, though, have had an answer throughout the day. Big possession here just to calm their team down and maybe get the crowd out of this. Jenkins way outside, defended by Lamb. Jenkins off the drive, the floater. Bank shot doesn't go. And it's rebounded by Jones for Kentucky, trying to bring the lead to double figures. Team, the wraparound feed. Miller had to lead the Puts it in. Ten point cushion for Kentucky. Largest lead of the day. 
7-0 run for John Calipari's squad. Well, the confidence has skyrocketed for Kentucky in the last two minutes. Taylor gives it up for Goldberg. Jenkins is 3 of 14. He can't get a look against Lamb. Goldberg. Jones there defensively. They collapse on Jenkins. Shot clock at 14. Tinsley a cut towards the rim. Turnaround. Doesn't go. And Jones comes down with the defensive board. We will hit seven minutes to play. Lamb doesn't take the corner pop. Jones. High Archer. No. And out of bounds. Davis touched it last. 657 mark of the second half. Kentucky up by 10. Game summary here at Rupp Arena. Kentucky leads at 66 to 56. Hot shooting in the second half. 72% for Kentucky. That's 57% overall. And the points in the paint has been all Wildcats. Ian Eagle along with Jim Spinarco. You get a little bit of that March Madness feel in here with these two teams. You know both will be in the NCAA right. tournament. Kentucky, though, is so tough to build any kind of momentum right. against because they have game changers everywhere, including that man. Yeah, they don't give you any easy shots. So, And especially when you think you have an easy shot, they close on you very quickly. We've seen that happen to Jenkins this afternoon on the perimeter, and clearly with five blocks, Anthony Davis has been roaming the middle of the floor and keeping Vandy on their toes whenever they want to take a shot. And now the pressure defense. Vanderbilt handles it with Taylor across for Jenkins. Down to 6.40 to play. Taylor to the hoop. He lays it in. That's an impressive move by Jeffrey Taylor. Ducking through to get the deuce. He's got 17. And actually using the basket as a guide for him just then. Because if he stays on the left side of the basket, I think Davis has a shot at blocking that. T. The floater doesn't go. Taylor comes the other way for Vanderbilt. Down eight. Jenkins. Huh. Jenkins three. He's got it. Commodore's climbing back into it. He's got 12 points. Jenkins, that's eight off his season average. But Vanderbilt now down by five, second half. Look at the game reset. Possession arrow favors Vanderbilt. The team fouls are all even at five apiece. Both coaches have plenty of timeouts to work with. What we've seen from Jenkins now in the second half, nine points, all from three-point territory. He scored just three in the first half. He scored in double figures in 62 consecutive games. Kentucky 66, Vanderbilt 61. Davis on a dump down for Jones, forced to the outside. Jones the drive, the kick for T. Shot clock is down to 13. High screen from Davis. Azili helps out defensively. Miller needs some help. Five to shoot. That reach. T shake and bake. T the leaner. No good. And it's rebounded by Taylor. Good work there by Jenkins. Not to reach. Don't reach with the shot clock down to five seconds and bail yourself out defensively. 17 points, nine rebounds for Jeffrey Taylor. Five-point lead for Kentucky. Jenkins. Gives it up for Taylor, 15 to shoot. Now it's Goldberg, he makes his move, and a foul on the outside. Terrence Jones was trying to body up on Goldberg. As you mentioned, John Jenkins waking up a little bit more here in the second half, looking for a shot, shooter shoot. One of the best in the country at shooting the basketball, and now I think it's the key. I think one of the keys that you'll see right now is making sure that Tinsley sets up the shooters and gets them in the right spot. Tinsley very good second in the SEC at assist to turnover ratio. Four fouls on Jones. Jenkins up oh, three. Did not have a lot of room to work with there, but all he needs is a crack. And you've heard the expression quick release, catch and go. Wow, was that ever quick? The Kentucky Wildcats have not lost at home since John Calipari took over as the head coach. 50 straight wins on its home floor for Kentucky. 66, 64 Wildcats. We're down to 440 to play. Teague, foul called on Jenkins out front. And the ability of Teague to get to his right. left and look just as comfortable as he is going to his right. Okay, both teams right now, six team fouls. And you're right, Teague, that broke them down in the first half going to his left. 
Stop the penetration off the dribble right now if you're Vanderbilt. Tinsley guarding Miller. Two-point lead for Kentucky. Davis makes his move. Denied! Festus Azili! A break the other way for Jenkins. Pull up three. He's fouled. And his toe might have been on the line. Jenkins is going to the free throw line. Just recently in the Georgia game, he got fouled twice behind the three-point stripe. He made all three very close just at running the floor. Miller is going to pick up the foul. That's number three. John Jenkins, 85% shooter, picking it up in the second half. 16 now for Jenkins. He was held to 15 points on 5 of 14 shooting in the first meeting. It's a 9-0 run for Vanderbilt. They trail by one. Jenkins off the mark on the second attempt. It was called a two-point attempt. Davis on a dribble handoff, 14. 18 to shoot. 66-65 Kentucky. And even four minutes to play. Outside Teague, eight to shoot. Jenkins draws the assignment. High screen Davis. Teague in some trouble. Shot clock down to three. Teague dumps it down low. Davis turn around. Money. Well, what a clutch shot. The turn around. That shows you the instinctive skills of Anthony Davis at the offensive end. And they don't even go to him that often. 24 for the freshman. Anthony Davis on nine of ten from the field. Curl by Taylor. The hole was clogged up. Three-point lead for Kentucky. Let's be relaxed. Taylor takes out Kid Gilchrist. Strokes the fadeaway. Bank shot, no. Rebound. Body flying. Taylor and T go down, and Kid Gilchrist is grabbing his left leg. In that collision, Kid Gilchrist was on the left side of the floor. Taylor sees the big fella coming out to get him, so he throws up a hard shot. Then they meet to the right, but if you notice on the left, Kid Gilchrist is already down. And watch the quick instincts. Understand the clock situation, catch it and burn, and turn with it and make it happen. Beautiful shot. We've got a good one here in Lexington, Kentucky. Greg Gumbel in New York updating Virginia Tech at Duke and Virginia Tech giving the Blue Devils all they can handle. Dorenzo Hudson's three puts Tech up by three. Duke has answered with a basket right now. 55 seconds to play. It's Virginia Tech by one. Ian and Jim. Well, the parody around college basketball, it's a reminder every single day. As you watch teams around the country, take a look at what happened to Kid Gilchrist, Jimmy. Here's Kid Gilchrist right here, Ian. He's, he's going to start on the right side of this floor, but then he gets dragged through and watch him go to his left. Now he gets tangled up a little bit before this rebound caroms right, gets his foot kind of tied up and maybe strains the left leg, the left knee a little bit. That Kid Gilchrist is trying to jog and see how much pressure he can put on it. He's got four personal fouls and currently on the bench. Kentucky with 17 fouls, Vanderbilt with 17 fouls, and Teague at the free throw line, where he shoots it at 69%. Gets the roll on the first attack. Marcus Teague, the freshman from Indianapolis. Wildcats are now 9 of 11 from the free throw line. Short, rebounded by Jenkins. Kentucky up by four. We approach three minutes to play. Pretty much the guys on the floor for Vanderbilt have had 411 career starts. I, and they have a lot of experience. Let's see how that plays out. Jenkins can't hit the three. Rebound out of bounds off of Jones. Vanderbilt will retain it. And now Kid Gilchrist will check back in for Kentucky. He's lumbering a bit there. Yeah. It's not moving fluidly as Jones will take a seat. Going small because they think that Taylor will be involved. I think so also. Here he is with the ball. Taylor using the Azili screen. Taylor. Well, Azili in there a while. That's why the fans started to growl a little bit. Tinsley off the pick. Kick out for Goldberg. Swinging around the perimeter. Taylor. The drive. He's hammered. 
Taylor is going to the free throw line. Get Taylor involved and be patient and allow something to develop before you just take your first opportunity. So one of the things about Taylor just then, very, very patient and a nice drive against two Kentucky players. The second player was Kid Gilchrist and they just gave him the foul. That's it. Number five on Michael Kidd Gilchrist. He fouls out with eight points and eight boards. And that was an issue for him early in his freshman season. And this is not a deep Kentucky team as we discussed. His day is over as he limps his way towards the Kentucky bench and takes a seat next to Rod Strickland, the former NBA star. I think that'll play into next possession too. When Vandy comes back down the floor, we'll take a look to see who gets the assignment of this guy, Taylor, on the free throw line. Taylor is one of three from the line. Vanderbilt is a team, 12 of 17. Now make it 12 of 18. The little things melt, don't they? They add up after a while. Last season, Vanderbilt lost here at Rupp, 68 to 66. Foul called, so it compounds the problem as Jones will go to the free throw line. Goldburn will pick up the foul for Vanderbilt. Two missed free throws, so an empty possession. And now Kentucky with a chance to put points on the board. Two forty-two left to play in this second half. Be ready to block out. Kentucky, number one free throw shooting team in the SEC at 72%. Terrence Jones, 65% shooter, native of Portland, Oregon. And it got seven figures, 10 points now for Jones, the sophomore. Big swing there, huh? You go from two misses down one end to two makes at the other. No time off the clock. That's the only benefit for Vanderbilt right there. 71 to 65, Kentucky. Jenkins, entry, Goldberg, Azili the tip, and he's fouled. Just as Azili to the free throw line, a 60% shooter. He positioned himself so well on that right side with the entry pass. And it's number two on Anthony Davis. Vanderbilt in the first half went 10 of 12 from the free throw line in this second half, two of seven. Festus Azila. Vanderbilt is actually number two in the SEC right. in free throw shooting at 71%. Azili is now three of three. Steady progress over his four year career. Rims out on the second attempt. Kentucky up by five. 220 to play. Second half. And this is where Kentucky gives you the impression that they don't track the shot. Let's see if they can have this unselfish half-court set. So far, three or four guys have touched the basketball already with their passes. Teague on the perimeter. Gives it up for Jones. Shot clock down to 10. Miller, hard drive. Miller, the floater, is good! Darius Miller with an aggressive play going to the hoop. And I love the possession for Kentucky Iron. They took enough time off the clock, about 12 or so. Worked it, everybody involved. The screens, the timing, just terrific execution. Big possession here for Vanderbilt. 73-66 Kentucky. Jenkins creating off the dribble and drives in for the floater. 18 points for Jenkins. It's a five-point game with 139 left. Look at the game reset. Vanderbilt does have the possession arrow. Two timeouts remaining for the Commodores. Kentucky, nine team fouls. So the next one will put Vanderbilt in the double bonus with 139 to play here at Rupp. And I think as Vanderbilt, you have to remember that, that you have the possession arrow. If you do get tied up, don't turn the basketball over. The number one scoring margin in college basketball belongs to Kentucky, outscoring opponents by 19 points per game. This has been much closer than Kentucky has been used to this season. 73-68 Wildcats. We're down to a minute 22 to play. Okay. Patient enough to take time off the clock right now with a two possession game. On a handoff for Miller against Jenkins. Miller backs in, now backs it up for Teague. Seven to shoot. Teague. Outside Davis will take the jumper. Got it! 
Boy, we talked about his ability and his growth as an offensive player. That is a huge shot for a 6'11 guy, and what a beautiful stroke. And always calm and yeah. under control. He's like he's been around here for four years already. Seven-point lead, Goldberg on a rack attack. Timeout called with 49.1. Kentucky up by five. They'll have the ball. Well, he flares, patient, composed, and knocks it back. One timeout remaining for Vanderbilt. John Calipari's team has a five-point advantage with 49 seconds to play. Two weeks ago, these two teams played 69-63. Kentucky, Vanderbilt did not score over the final four minutes and change. Commodores have executed late in this game. I like this defense on. I think you just go gangbuster right there. Force the action. Good work there by Vanderbilt. They forced Kentucky into a timeout with 43.8 left to play. Kentucky 75, Vanderbilt 70 with 43.8 left on the clock. Kentucky with a basketball. 30 seconds remaining on the shot clock. What's the strategy here for Kevin Stallings well, and company? My strategy is pretty simple. Play as aggressively as you want because if you foul, that's okay. So it's a good, play, a good place to be in if you go after it. I don't have a problem with a foul right here. High dribble. No foul. For the finish. And that's why I say the foul line because I'd rather take a free throw to stop the clock rather than a snowbird. Seven-point lead for Kentucky. 30 seconds to play. Goldberg. Rejected by Davis. And that could be the defensive dagger for Kentucky. Six blocks for the freshman, Anthony Davis. We have seen him come up just in the last 30 seconds. Big time, and I mean real big time at the offensive end with his shot. And Kevin Stallings had to look right across from his bench and another great defensive play by the youngster and boy this youngster has some age on him when it comes to experience and the quality of play that anthony davis has brought to the table for kentucky teague of the three throw line one and one he hits on the first anthony davis 26 points 10 rebounds and six blocks Two out of two for T. 26 seconds remaining. Kentucky has built its lead up to nine. Taylor brings it across and then will throw in uncontested for the jam. Timeout Vanderbilt with 20.8 remaining. But Kentucky in the driver's seat. Vanderbilt is out of timeouts. We have 20.8 remaining to play here in Lexington. 79-72 Kentucky in front of Vanderbilt. The number one team in the country. Challenged by Vanderbilt SEC rivals. Similar to the first meeting. Commodores had some chances in the second half, but Kentucky just comes at you in waves. Oh, they look, they look deep. Miller gets it in for Davis. Foul given with 19.7, and Anthony Davis will head to the free throw line. Doesn't that tell you something right there, Ian? That they have the confidence to throw it into the big man. <laughs> exactly. He's a 70% free throw shooter. And I think he'll be better than that down the road. That stroke looks like at least a 75, if not 80% stroke. Exactly. And 6 of 7 from the line this afternoon. And you're absolutely right. Watch the technique. He just, he has it. I mean, he has all components of the game. And he has matched his high, 27 points for Anthony Davis. And let's face it, this was a fairly big stage for them today, knowing that Vandy is one of the teams in this league that can take them. Well, he's responded like a veteran senior right now. New career high, 28 points for Anthony Davis. Crossover, Taylor to the rim, unable to finish, and a foul called over the back. Jones was fighting for the rebound. Yep. And he got his body in on Festus Azili. And that'll do it for Terrence Jones. Number five. So Festus Azili will head to the strike. 
John Calipari wants to huddle up with his team. 12 points, six rebounds for the sophomore Jones. Kyle Wiltcher, freshman, will check in to replace Jones. Eleven seconds to play. Vanderbilt down by nine. And two free throws coming up for Azili. Well, no doubt, Festus Azili has been affected by those knee troubles, and sometimes it's just mental. Try to get back to where you believe you once were physically and trusting that your body will not give out on you. Absolutely, and, and it's a constant test to make sure you don't overexert yourself. But pretty good effort from him this afternoon with 14, six rebounds, 15 and six. Three blocks. Final seconds. Foul called with 7.4 on the clock. And Teague is going to head to the free throw line. So the Kentucky Wildcats will improve to 28 and 1, 14 and 0 in the SEC. The 2002-2003 team went 16 and 0, and the 1995-96 championship team went undefeated as well in the SEC. This is going to clinch the regular season title for John Calipari's team within the conference. And they made their free throws effectively today. Tinsley at three. Kentucky passes another test. The Wildcats, 51 straight wins at home as they defeat Vanderbilt, 83 to 74. For Jim Spinarco, this is Ian Eagle. So long from Lexington. Coming up, game two of our triple header. Villanova, Georgetown, others will see UCLA and Arizona. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports on the road to the Final Four.